Hello everyone, and welcome back to War Capsule. Today, I want to talk about a movie that has been on my mind for quite some time now, Narvik. This movie is a war drama that tells the story of the Battle of Narvik, which took place during World War II. Firstly, I have to say that I was blown away by the cinematography in this movie. The visuals were stunning, and the attention to detail was impeccable. But more than just being visually impressive, Narvik also had a powerful story at its core. The film follows a group of soldiers who are sent to Norway to fight against Nazi forces during the early days of World War II. One thing that really stood out to me about this movie was how it portrayed war as something deeply personal and emotional. It wasn't just about strategy or tactics, it was about human beings struggling to survive in an incredibly difficult situation. Of course, no discussion of Narvik would be complete without mentioning the incredible performances from the cast. Everyone involved in this movie gave it their all, bringing a level of authenticity and depth to their roles that really made you feel like you were watching real people going through real struggles. I would highly recommend Narvik to anyone who is interested in war movies or historical dramas. It's a beautifully crafted film with a lot of heart and soul behind it, and I think it deserves more recognition than it has received in 1939. When World War II began, Norway declared neutrality. However, Sweden had been supplying 85% of the iron ore used by the German weapons industry before the war. This iron ore was transported from Narvik in Norway to Germany. As Narvik was strategically important to Germany, they invaded Norway under the guise of protecting themselves from France and Britain's aggression. At the same time, a group of neutral soldiers were being transferred to Narvik. Corporal Gunnar Toft was among them and was returning home to celebrate his son's birthday. Upon arriving at Narvik port, Gunnar and his fellow soldiers were informed that their leaves were cancelled but were unaware of Germany's violation of Norway's neutrality. Despite this setback, Gunnar managed to get some time off for his son's birthday and reunited with his wife Ingrid and son all briefly before returning four hours late to his base. Upon returning to the base, he discovered that German troops had attacked Narvik, sinking Norwegian ships on their way and violating Norway's neutrality. Gunnar's senior officer Major Sigurd Andel spoke with the German leader and decided to back off for the moment to avoid a major bloodbath. As the sun rises on a new day, Ingrid is shocked to find her workplace overrun by German soldiers. Led by the conniving Consul Fritz Wasso, the Germans have taken control of the town and are on the hunt for any British representatives. But Ingrid is not one to sit idly by and watch as her town falls under Nazi rule. She helps the British find refuge in a remote hunting lodge, all while keeping a watchful eye on her family's safety. But things take a dangerous turn when Ingrid tries to leave town and find that the Germans have blocked all civilian roads out of Narvik. Trapped and desperate, she must find a way to outsmart the enemy and protect those she loves. Meanwhile, Gunnar has joined forces with Major Amurg's troop, determined to take down the Nordal Bridge and cut off the Germans' access to Narvik's precious iron ore. With his father's help, he locates the dynamite needed for their mission, but soon discovers that Ingrid and Ol are headed straight towards danger on a train bound for the bridge. As Gunnar and his team work to fix the dynamite on the bridge, tension builds as they hear commotion on the other end. Expecting a German attack, they are surprised to see a group of civilians walking towards them. Ingrid and Ol are among them, and Ingrid delivers shocking news. The Germans have stopped a train in Hundelen. Gunnar quickly sends his family to safety in Sweden, but he must stay behind to complete his mission. As he places the dynamite on the bridge, German troops suddenly appear and open fire. With bullets whizzing past him, Gunnar manages to detonate the explosives just in time. But victory is short-lived as Gunnar and his team are captured by German soldiers and taken as prisoners of war. Ingrid watches helplessly as her friend is arrested for blowing up the bridge. Desperate to help Gunnar, Ingrid turns to Consul Wasso for assistance. The charming Consul is attracted to her and promises to speak with General Dietl about Gunnar's captivity. However, things take a dark turn when Ingrid Ingrid visits the English consul at a hunting lodge. Blackmailed into finding the location of German artillery positions in town, she must navigate dangerous waters if she hopes to save her friend from certain death. Ingrid's world is turned upside down when the British Navy launches a surprise attack on the German troops in Narvik. Forced to take shelter in the basement of her home, Ingrid can only watch as the chaos unfolds outside. But when she gets her hands on a crucial German map, she knows she has to act fast. 
Risking everything, Ingrid takes the map to the English consul, who is grateful for her help and promises to send troops to aid them. But just as Ingrid is returning home, tragedy strikes again. Her house is destroyed in a British air raid and only Ole survives. As weeks pass by, the Germans tighten their grip on Narvik while French and Polish troops launch a daring attack from all sides. Meanwhile, Gunnar, who was arrested by the Germans, discovers that his father has died while he was held captive. But hope is not lost. With the arrival of French troops, Gunnar and other Norwegian prisoners of war are rescued and the recapture of Narvik begins. Will they be able to reclaim their city from the clutches of their oppressors? Only time will tell. The war rages on in Narvik, and innocent civilians are caught in the middle of the chaos. Consul Wasso is frantically searching for the English consul, while Ingrid's son falls ill from a shell that entered his body during a bombing. Ingrid strikes a deal with Wasso, offering to reveal the English consul's location in exchange for medical treatment for her son. But her decision to side with the Germans doesn't sit well with her friend Bjork, who spreads rumors about Ingrid and Wasso. Meanwhile, it seems that the English consul may have already passed on crucial information about the German artillery. Two weeks later, Gunnar and his brave comrades arrive in Narvik with a mission to destroy the cannons guarding the coast. They succeed in taking down the German soldiers, but upon returning to Narvik, Gunnar is confronted with an unpleasant rumor about his wife's supposed closeness to the enemy. As tensions continue to mount and loyalties are tested, one thing is clear, survival in wartime comes at a steep price. Consul Wasso, with his ulterior motives, tries to lure Ingrid away to Berlin by falsely informing her of Gunnar's death. However, his plan backfires when Ingrid decides to leave town with her son after hearing the news. As fate would have it, Gunnar returns home just in time to catch his wife and son rummaging through the remains of their house. The couple's joyous reunion is short-lived as Gunnar accuses Ingrid of aiding the Germans in arresting the British consul and cheating on him with a German. The tension between them escalates as they argue about their differing perspectives on the war. But before they can reconcile, the Germans launch an air raid on Narvik, forcing Ingrid to prioritize her son's safety and leave town while Gunnar stays behind to defend their home. Their love may be strong, but it seems that even it cannot withstand the turmoil of war and conflicting loyalties. At the bustling dock, Ingrid faces a barrage of hostility from the locals who see her as a traitor for aiding the Germans. Desperately trying to gather her belongings and escape on a fishing vessel, Ingrid is stunned to find Gunnar by her side, finally choosing his family over his loyalty to the Nazis. With time running out and chaos reigning supreme, the fishing ships become a beacon of hope for Ingrid, Gunnar, Ole, and other civilians seeking safety from the German onslaught. As they sail away from Narvik, they witness firsthand the devastation wrought by Hitler's forces. The recapture of Narvik would go down in history as Hitler's first defeat, a momentary triumph that was soon overshadowed by Germany's relentless march across Europe. The Norwegian King Haakon VII fled to London to lead a government in exile while Norwegian troops were left at the mercy of their German oppressors. On June 8, 1940, Norway surrendered to Germany and remained under their control until 1945 when Germany finally capitulated, bringing an end to World War II. The heart-wrenching ending of Narvik captures the devastating reality of war where innocent civilians are caught in the crossfire. The Battle of Narvik was a pivotal moment in Norway's history as it showcased their resilience against German aggression. The latest Netflix war drama film beautifully captures this struggle and highlights the contradictions that emerge during wartime. It is a poignant reminder of the devastating impact war has on innocent lives and how it can tear families apart. Thank you so much for joining me on this journey through the movie Narvik. I hope you enjoyed the summary and were able to get a glimpse into the powerful story of love, sacrifice, and devotion that it tells. As we wrap up, I want to ask you, what's the next movie you want to see summarized? Is there a particular film that you've been curious about but haven't had the chance to watch yet? Let me know in the comments below and I'll do my best to bring it to life in my next summary. Once again, thank you for watching and I can't wait to hear your suggestions.